Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Money Zone. I'm your host, Falasha Day, the Accountability Accountant, guys. And sorry I missed you guys last week. You would not even believe what I was fighting. I'll tell you guys, I was fighting ants um, from coming from outside of my house, inside of my house last week. And if you guys are familiar with fighting ants, you cannot stop um fighting the ants or it's going to spread throughout your whole house so last week guys i had to cancel the radio show because of the ants coming in because they left crabs outside of my yard so just to give you guys a disclaimer we are having storms here in our area like really really tumultuous storms here so if the connection goes bad or whatever the case may be then look I try to show up. I'm here, ready to talk with you guys, but we can't control the weather. So guys, on today's show, we're going to talk about dealing with inflation. I know you've been hearing this topic all over. So you know, dang, why I feel like my head is crooked. So you know that I have to talk about it. So earlier throughout the show, like a few episodes, I think it... In season eight, I know I started to prepare you guys for inflation. I asked you guys to do a budget and everything. So if you didn't catch that episode in season eight, you want to head over to Everywhere Podcast this house and check out that past episode so you guys could get the practical things that you should have done prior to us being where we are right now in July. So on today's show, we're going to talk about you guys dealing with the inflation. So the inflation has hit. The recession is slightly hit. The economists don't want to say it, but between y'all, the recession is already here, okay? So because of all of that, I want to talk about ways for you guys to be able to deal, cope, and actually pivot and maybe even come off um, on top after this inflation, after this recession. So if you're on the edge, if you're concerned like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to be doing? Things like that. Or if you know someone that is like budget conscious and having a hard time, you want to share tonight's video with them. So if you're watching us on social media, you can share it on across on all of your social media platforms. If you're watching us on Rip, um, Rip Radio TV, you can share it there. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you can share it as well. Everybody that's watching us on Instagram, you're on my phone right here and I cannot share, but you guys can share it to them as well. So guys, if you want to see my screen, because I will be sharing it throughout the show, you want to head over to one of those other social media platforms and not Instagram. So guys, what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick little break. And Brian, just to give you a heads up because of the storm, and I don't know if it's going to continue on, let's make my break a little bit short. So we're going to take a quick little break, guys, and we'll be right back. Hey guys, and welcome back to The Money Zone. I'm your host, Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, guys. If you don't know who I am, I help small businesses and individuals 
save money and build generational wealth. And guess what? Tonight's topic, this inflation stuff burning me up, y'all, because inflation, the cost of living increase, all of those things, guys, put a damper in your wealth or in your present income or in your opportunities to invest and things like that. So right now I'm like fighting like this inflation thing. So guys, what I will ask you to do because tonight's show might be a hinge of practicality and some dialogue, I will advise you guys throughout tonight's show to make sure you have your pen and your paper so you won't miss all of the tips and things that I'm going to give you guys throughout tonight's show. And if you guys are not able to catch the full show or you want to be basically tune in after, head over to where all podcasts are housed so you can catch up and watch the replay of the episode. All right, y'all. So first of all, let's take a step back. Let it let, let let's 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 take a step back because a lot of you, let's really be honest, don't even know what inflation is. You put it on your Instagram, you put it on your Twitter, you put it on your Facebook, and girl, between me and you and your significant other, you really don't know what inflation is. So I'm going to dumb it down on layman's terms for the everyday purchase person, which is what I primarily do. All right, so inflation is when everything all of your normal how would i say um um your necessities your normal necessities which is gas food um electric all of those bills where your normal regular bills increase and it's uncontrollable so right now no one is able to control the inflation no one the feds are, you know, increasing interest rates, trying to prevent us from spending. Biden talking about giving us a stimulus check. Economists are like, everything is all over the place. Nobody knows what's going on. But the common factor is everything is increasing. And that's what inflation does. Inflation actually adds an additional cost to your everyday purchases. So if you're a mom like me, you probably went grocery shopping and your normal bill will probably be like $70, $80. I'm just throwing a number out there. And that's the question I have to ask you guys before we even dive in. Have you felt that every time you purchase something, you paid a higher price than what you did in January? So, I know from my personal experience, because I keep all of my receipts and I also enter all of my receipts into my rewards app. And I should put the link here um, in my rewards app, Fetch, right? So I know what I paid for milk two weeks ago. I know what I paid for eggs. I know what I paid for eggs three weeks ago. Many of you, because you never really paid attention to what you're actually was spending, what you were spending, what the cost was, right? You're not realizing that everything is going up, which is very naive of you. I've been warning you guys for the past couple of months, pay attention to your expenses, do your budget, do all of this. So if you followed my instructions from the past video and you did your budget and you're now watching today's show... You're going to be like, flush day, hell yeah, everything flip it, increase everything, y'all. So let's dive in. So that's what inflation, inflation is when you go to the grocery store, gas, everything increase, and, we, and no one knows really what to do. They're trying to figure out every way to stimulate, destimulate, do all of this stuff, guys. They don't know what to do. But guess what? We're about to figure it out tonight. So the first thing that I need all of you guys to do is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Okay. And the reason being is because the, the U.S. can only go so far. We can only lose so much value. We can only go maybe as far as the Great Depression. We can only probably go as far as it was in the 2008, 2000, 2006 to 2009 recession. So if you've survived that recession, which I did, right? If you're like my age, you, you survived. So you know what it takes to survive during tough times. However. We're now fighting increased housing prices. We're also fighting gas. We also fighting the um, the the business structure, the business landscape. So it's just so many different arenas. So how do you, as a everyday Joe Smo, small business, what do we need to do? First things first, we have to get control of our spending. 
We have to get control of our sweating. So like last week, y'all, I did not want to, well, I did cook, but I still wanted outside food. So I spent a little bit last week. So this week I said, oh, no, I can't spend. So if you already know you've had your little fun this summer, you spent a little bit, let's stop spending. One, the reason why you want to stop spending so you can evaluate what you are spending things on. So you want to first stop spending. So that's tip number one. Stop spending for right now. Like your everyday purchases, like your gas, your groceries, your um, kids' tuition, summer camp, those things, those are, you have to spend on those. I'm not referring to those. What I'm talking about, let's say, for example, if your girl say, boo, let's go for drinks. Let's go for brunch. Let's shop. Those extracurricular things. Like right now, I just need us to just focus on the necessities. Here's why. The moment that you guys can control your spending now, right? You will be able to start sacking away the money that you might need in the next four months because we're just at the head. We're just at the head. A recession has to go from the head to the feet. So we're just at the head of the recession. So if you're able to get disciplined now, and save a little bit, okay? And that can just be $100 here, $50 here, $75 here, $100 here, just sock it away. The second thing I need you guys to do is increase ways for you guys to make money. I do not feel comfortable telling you guys that you guys can build generational wealth just flat off where you are unless you are financially free. You guys cannot save you cannot build generational wealth and you sure as hell will not be able to deal with this recession that's coming ahead if you guys don't figure out ways to make additional monies. So if you have a business that sell a particular product, see if it's other products that you can launch without adding. Here's the key, guys. You want to launch products without adding additional cost to your bottom line. I'm not saying go out and launch a new product, spend $15,000 on marketing. Eh, eh, eh. No, I need like a little sound thing over here. So I don't have to be my own sound person. No, I want you guys to maybe incorporate, launch a product because you probably already sit on something. A lot of you guys have created stuff that you never launched. A lot of you got um, programs and packages that you already created that you never launched. I'm talking about launch that stuff. Launch all of the stuff that you got sitting in the cut that's sitting there. Or launch something that's tangible, that, that has something to do with your hands. Like if you can crochet, if you can make them little waist beads, whatever you can do. Don't make a huge investment in it, but see if you can sell it. That's the thing. Side hustle. Everybody needs it. Okay. And I don't even care. If you are a business person and you BSing right now, if you have a product and you BSing right now, you're not posting, then you want to struggle, period. So the third thing I need us to realize that what we, the actions we take today predicates what we do tomorrow. So if you guys move after watching tonight's show only on Rip Radio Network, right? And you guys go and execute, then by September, you will have some savings. By September, you will have extra coins. By September, you probably can live your little lifestyle while everybody else is struggling because of recession and struggling because of what? Inflation. But because you decided to incorporate a side hustle or build your business and do the work, then guess what? In two to three months, guys, you won't be feeling the recession and the inflation that we are presently sitting on right now. So stop spending, save, incorporate a side hustle or launch a product that does not involve you spending anything. Number three, stop BSing. All of y'all, you're actually, let me be very honest with y'all. You guys are actually digging your own self in the grave. Every day you don't promote your business. It's every day you decide that you don't want to make money. Every day you decide not to say something about your business. It's every day you decide that you don't want to make money. So guess what? You're setting your family up to fail and to struggle in three months. Because the money and the marketing and the investments that you guys make today will pay out in a couple of months, a couple of weeks. It, does, it may not pay out today. But if you don't move today, you won't have no money for tomorrow. So make sure you guys take actionable steps and build those businesses. 
I know that's a lot. Number four, y'all, we have to know our numbers. And I've been saying this forever. Know your numbers, know your numbers, know your numbers. It is very imperative that you guys know your numbers. And I'm about to share my screen really quick. About to share my screen really quick. Where is this? On Business News is Daily. Give me one second, y'all. And as I said, if you're watching us on Instagram or anywhere else, then um, you would not be able to see my screen, but you can hand over. Okay, guys, so we are on the Business News Daily. And this talking about this um, article is talking about what should your profit margins be, and so this article came out on June 29th. So why did I bring this up? It's because most of you do not know your numbers. You do not know your numbers, so you will not be able to sustain during a tough time. The moment that you guys know your numbers right and the moment that you use your numbers so let me give you an example let's say and i'm gonna have to probably pick up my other phone let's say for example oh we can use one right here they have an example right here on the screen so let's say for example they gave you um an example here say revenue minus cost of goods sold. so we're going to talk about some cost of goods we're going to talk about some numbers right now guys okay so let's say, for example, your revenue is a hundred dollars, okay? And your cost of goods sold, meaning the cost that it takes for you either to purchase the product, get it to market, package it up, all of those things, that's considered your cost of goods sold, right? Let's say that's ten dollars. So we'll take the hundred dollars, subtract the ten dollars, that will leave you ninety dollars. That is your gross profit a lot of you when people say oh i made a million dollars they're telling you the top line revenue they're not telling you what their gross profit is on that so let's say for example they did make this um the uh, million dollars right but they spent five hundred thousand dollars on facebook ads that means they only have a gross profit of five hundred dollars I made $500,000. And let me change and give you another example. So let's say, for example, you sell hair, right? You sell hair for $600. However, your hair vendor charges you $300. So that means you have a gross profit of only $300. You guys are getting the numbers mixed up. You cannot judge the overall success of your product, your business, or anything with the revenue. You have to, first of all, get the revenue down to what the gross profit is, and then you know what that is, and then the normal expenses you have to subtract from the gross profit. But many of you are not using your numbers, so you really don't know why knowing like your profit margin is very important. So I'm just going to read this guys off the screen. It says, um, why is profit margin important? Profit margin is important because simply put it, simply put, it shows how much of every revenue dollar is flowing to the bottom line. Okay. So if y'all, you know, street people or, you know, you know, your little not green or whatever. So you know how they say, oh, I make uh I make five dollars, I make five dollars, I make five dollars out of a hundred. I can't even say it right, but I normally say it right all the time. So let's say, for example, your product is a hundred dollars, but you sell it for ninety dollars. Well, no, let's say you got it for ninety dollars. That means you're only making ten dollars on the product. So that means for every dollar you make, you're only making 10 cents. So your margins are very, 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 very important because it determines how much money your business is retaining after it covers its initial cost to manufacture or produce the product or to create the service. So you guys just looking at the top line, you're wondering, oh my gosh, my business is doing well. Looking at your bank statement, seeing, oh yeah, 20,000 was deposited in my bank statement. 
I mean, bank account, 30,000 was deposited, not knowing that that's the revenue. You have to get to the, the gross profits and also the net income. So it's two layers to this numbers games, guys, and you have to know it. You want to know the top line. That's your revenue. Okay. But you also have to know what your gross profits is. That's the middle number. And you want to know your bottom line number and that's your net income or your net loss. During tough times like this, guys, you have to know all three because the amount that you make at the top determines if you can cover the expenses at the bottom. And the number in the middle, which is your gross profit, right? determines the amount of money that you will have left over to cover the other expenses. So I know that might be a lot. That's why I do not like to get into a lot of numbers, 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 numbers stuff with you guys. But one core number you guys need to know is your gross profits. Let's not even focus on revenue right now. Let's focus on gross profits because a lot of you that's selling products, you're struggling right now because you're purchasing a product too high. Your volume may not be enough, so you're not getting a good enough discount. So your margins are very low. So if you know right now, you don't feel like your business is making the amount of money that you're supposed to be making off your products, then you probably more than likely need to evaluate what you're purchasing it for. And right now, guess what? The businesses that are going to survive are the businesses that, that's going to use their daggone numbers, period. The, no one is going to survive financially. I'm not talking about life or death. Financially, guys, if they don't look at the numbers. Why are you afraid? You say you want to be successful. To be successful, we have to look at the numbers. So that's the thing you, uh, for my business, you guys need to know your profit margins. And for my individuals, for my the ones that don't have an, um, a side hustle or that don't have a business, but they just have your regular nine to five, you also need to do the same thing. But you won't have a gross profit number. Well, actually, you might, depending on if you have your investments coming directly out, like your 401k, your raw. You have all of that stuff automatically coming out, then you will have your gross profits. But if you are, you don't have a nine, if, you, if you're only a nine to fiver, you also definitely need to know the top line. So the top line is what you and your husband bring in. So if you bring in five grand and your husband bring in five grand, you need to know what that is. The problem with you guys, you cannot estimate. You actually need to go to your husband's pay stub and go to your pay stub and you're not going to get the top amount, the gross. You're not going to get the gross. You're going to get the net pay that is deposited into your family's bank account. So you guys hear the, the storm. That's what I'm trying to rush because I don't know if the storm is going to crash me or not. So if you are an employee, pull your pay stub out. You see the net. That's the barber number. So that number says three grand. Okay. So if that number says three grand. That means you have three grand coming into your house to cover all of your expenses. And so by listing out all of your expenses that needs to be, which is child care, groceries, toiletries, utilities, mortgage, rent, car note, car insurance, all of those are line items that are supposed to be on your budget. And the same thing, those are your expenses. We're going to take your $3,000 and we're going to subtract out all of your monthly expenses. And if it's a net, if it's a plus there, right, then that means you're bringing in more money than what you're spending. If you have a loss at the bottom, that means you are spending more money than what you are bringing in. Guys, for you guys to not be stressed out and to be in control, these are the things that we have to do right now. All of us. We have to look at the numbers and we have to be honest with ourselves.
And it's just the basic core numbers. You don't have to get all fancy and think you have to read financials like Warren Buffett or, you know, make major, major, major investments. And, you know, and that's another thing. A lot of people are like, oh, you hear some people say, oh, I'm saving my money, waiting for investments. Then you have some people saying, oh, I'm about to start this side hustle or whatever. One thing that I can say, guys, is just make sure that you do things you invest in things that you know of. Yes, you might have a couple of hundreds of thousands, 50,000, 3,000, whatever the case may be, right? And you might be tempted because you're hearing people telling you invest into this. Put put your 50,000 to your um, insurance pot. Like there, it's so much going on online. Like I can understand y'all being completely distracted and confused and don't know what to do. But during tough times like this, I will evaluate every investment. Don't touch anything that you already have going on. Let that accumulate, okay? But if you're, if somebody advising you to invest twenty thousand in a crypto, rethink it. If somebody telling you to give you their last fifteen thousand to invest into a business that you don't even know nothing about, rethink that right now. You want to invest in something that you actually know a little about, that you actually know that you can market and put out there, or you want to get things at a low price. You want to get things at a very, very low price and then be willing to hold. But if you're going to now spend your emergency fund as an investment tool, we have a problem. And so that is my fear, guys. Do you all have your investment money set, put away in one bank and your re your uh, your emergency fund put away somewhere? It should be totally two different packs of money. Because you don't want to invest with your emergency fund. Not during this time. Not during this time. What time is it, y'all? 7.27. I think we're about good to go. Okay. All right. So you want to invest, but you want to invest in things that you can do. But you want to invest only with money that is disposable. Not your emergency fund money. Okay, not your kids' tuition, not your mortgage payment. You understand? Like, that's risky investments. You will never be comfortable allowing the money to accumulate if you know you robbed Peter to invest in Paul. And we're not robbing Peter to invest in Paul right now. No. Okay? So be mindful. I think that was what? Five. All right, number six, y'all. You ready for number six? Are y'all ready for number six? You guys need to cut back. Cut back on like some little things. Like, let me give you an example. And you probably heard people say this. Cut back on your little subscriptions. So like right now, and this is where I'm challenged. And I'm the accountant, y'all. Don't even dog me out. But this is one day I want to give y'all a real example. So right now, you know, the office is growing. And because of COVID, we're not in the office. So we have a rise in, in the office. We have a rise and forward it to the Google Voice so my team can answer the phone virtually. So now we have so many team members, we need like extensions and stuff. So I invested in Vonage. I paid Vonage for two months. So now because I need to buckle down on my expenses and cut back, right? I need to figure out if I'm going to let go of Verizon because we're not in the office. I need to let, I need to figure out if we're going to keep Vonage. Like I have to consolidate. And some of you guys have probably the same thing going on in some other area that you haven't made decisions yet regarding about or some expense that is replicated. Okay. So like, for example, if you, this is an easy way to cut back. What is that? Um, oh, goodness. Scentbird. Right. So let's say, for example, you got the subscription to Scentbird and your perfume girl, but you also got a subscription to something else. Right. Just keep one of those for the time being and just sock that money away. Right. Just sock that money away. And then maybe like at the beginning of the year, if things clear up, everything's popping again. You got your coins, your savings and you discipline and you no longer need to have that subscription or not even using the products anymore. So it's a win win for everybody. So that's a practical example of what I mean by cutting back. When I say cut back, I'm not talking about don't take your family out on a monthly date. Like literally, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't believe in none of that type of um, 
um, over the ledge, almost suicidal type of investment and saving. I don't believe in that. Okay. Cause I remember when I was so poor and so broke, I had just wish I could, um, take, you know, eat out or take my family out or something like that. No, you cannot sacrifice yourself that much. But what I'm saying is that if you know, you're eating out two to three times a week, no, cut it back to one. If you know you're shopping too much, just cut back on the shop. I really need you guys to do that because that discipline that you're going to develop now is what's going to give you the monies and the act and the and the discipline that you need to invest and to save. Because see, this is the thing, guys. You cannot save nothing that you're going to need next month. You can't save what you're going to need next month because all you're doing is actually saving it for next month. So the reality is, guys, you remember I said you only invest from your investment pot, not the emergency fund. OK, investment pot, not the emergency fund. And you don't investment, invest in nothing you don't know of. Don't. All them crypto boys, they, they bombed out. They, they done. Most of them are done. OK, the people that's riding it out are the people that invested into it and just waiting for the long haul. And that's really the way that you build generational wealth, y'all, is investing now and waiting for the long haul. So if you know that you cannot have money sit somewhere for 10 years, don't invest that money, okay? Because I know a lot of people are telling y'all invest, do all those sorts of stuff, everything, okay? All right, guys, so I'm about to go into this last tip, and then we're going to take a quick little break. Seems like we're doing pretty good. The storm, you might hear banging a little bit, but it's not that bad, right? All right, guys, so next tip that I need you guys to do, and uh, I want y'all to be so debt-free, right? So this is kind of conflicting, but the reality is that during tough times, as you guys should have known this right now, because it's like our second tough time. Remember, I always said you want to prepare for what? Unforeseen circumstances, right? This is unforeseen circumstances. COVID was unforeseen circumstances. So we've been going, dealing with a lot, right? Recently, okay? So in that particular situation, right? You guys want to make sure that you access, not touch it, spend it yet, but you want to go ahead on and pull whatever lines of credit that your business, this is for my business people now. I'm not telling y'all individuals, we don't have a business to do this. No, this is for my businesses. If you have, let's say, for example, if Stripe gave you the opportunity for a line of credit, pull it, okay? If Cabbage gave you the opportunity for, and you know what to do with the money, see the right line. See, this is where it gets so conflicting about giving y'all advice because the reality is if you didn't do your budget, don't know how much you need, if you're not financially disciplined, which that's what I want you guys to develop, then guess what? When that 10 stacks hit, you're going to be like, oh, 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 let me slide over 3000 for myself. Y'all know. I see it all the time. Or you get the money and you scared to spend it. Oh, for lunch today, it's over 15000 there. I don't know what to do with it. So this is what I need y'all to do. You guys, not, you have to have your plans in place. Do not pull any money, y'all, if you don't know what it's needed. So here's one reason, well, a few reasons that you will need funding. One, if you're low on capital, if your business expenses is, let's say, 15 grand for the next three months and you only got two, you might want to go ahead on and get the business line of credit so you'll have that cushion to cover your expenses. And one thing I noticed, guys, it is hard to build a business when you're financially stressed. Okay? I did it. And it's challenging. You make bad decisions. You act out of desperation. And I don't want any of you guys to do that. Okay? So that's why I want you guys only if you know what to do with it, okay? Get the line of credit. So, it, and I gave you an example, one example so far that if you are low on the emergency fund that you need for your business for a couple of months, you want to get it for that. That's one. Number two, you want it for working capital. So let's say, for example, right now you're middle and you're in the middle of a launch and you want to invest more to Facebook ads or you want to hire another team member, you're scaling, right? You're scaling. Then you may need a working capital loan or a line of credit, whatever they call it, right? 
to hold you over or to be able to feed off until you get your investment back out. And so, I don't know. See, a lot of y'all, I don't know where you guys are in your business, right? But sometimes when we build in these businesses, you have to invest in your team. So I invested into my team for almost a year and a half before I had the amount of work that they needed. And so a lot of you don't have a year and a half of money to invest into their team. However, your working capital right now might be the little bit of cushion you need to hire your virtual assistant so you can take on more clients. So that's an example. So let's say, for example, you're going to take on 15 clients. But if you get a virtual assistant, you could take on 30 clients. Then that's the type of investment. That's the time you will use the working capital to pay your virtual assistant because you know it's a return on that. Okay. So guys, what I'm going to do, because I'm getting a little long-winded, I'm going to sip my cup of tea that's right here. What we're going to do, we're going to take a quick little break, guys, because I didn't give y'all so much. I probably need to go and do y'all a recap. No, you know what? No recap. You just go to check out the replay. <laughs> go check out the replay, guys. So what we're about to do, I'm going to take a quick little break, guys, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to The Money Zone. I'm your host, Felicia Day, the accountability accountant, guys. And we were talking about preparing you guys for the, I'm not even going to say preparing, that's some bullshit. Between us, is a recession. They just don't want to see it. They try to figure out a way to mitigate it, y'all. Um, but right now, we're in a recession and we're also dealing with massive inflation, right? And so in segment one, guys, it was giving you a lot of tips and more so tips for you guys to stay in control. One thing I want you guys to understand, remember, and some of you guys will kill me when I say this, America is the land of the free, where you can make all the fucking money. So that's what I need you guys to be concerned about, just making more money and just becoming more financially disciplined. Because it's nothing that we can do on the higher, you only can control what you're in control over. And that is where you're buying your products from, how much you're charging, the value that you offer, um, the cost and amount of time, um, the what you're paying your team, how much money you're spending, what you're spending it on. Like we can only control those things. And I want you guys to be completely mindful, right? That when you are able to adjust in tough times, then you have really the opportunity to control your financial history. 
I don't know if any of you, you might be new, you might not know my story, y'all, but I like designer stuff. I like designer stuff. For 10 years, I couldn't buy a bag. I couldn't buy nothing. I couldn't do nothing. I was shopping at Forever 21. No offense. I, oh, I was couldn't do nothing, right? Because I like to shop. I'm a girly girl, right? But that discipline of me not giving in to the Gucci and the Chanel and popping bottles and y'all, right? Allows me now to say, you know what? I don't need that. I don't have to buy that. I, I don't need that. I don't have to be there. I don't have to be on the scene. I don't have to please you. And like, honestly, guys, the moment you guys get in control and realize that you are control over everything, you will never be pleasing. You will never do nothing because of the gram. You will never be a copycat. You will always be the originator and you will always be financially free and everything. Because guess what? When you know you need that extra $50, you're going to be willing to go into your closet, find something and sell it for $75. But the person that's too gone ho worried about what Bob or Joe going to say down the street, they're like, oh, I don't want them to know that I got to sell stuff. Nope, sell it. I don't want you guys to be attached to anything. So if you have to get rid of it, you may have to get rid of it because we're going into that times where the reality is if you do have to sell something, that means you bought it when you couldn't afford it, period. I'm going to say that again. If you have to sell something anytime soon, either you bought it because you couldn't afford it or you like, let me make them coins. I would rather for you guys to be so disciplined that you bought it where you could afford it, but you trying to get them coins. So you're going to sell it and stash and do whatever. So I'm not telling you guys to sell your stuff, but what I'm trying to do is let you know that you will be in control over everything. Your confidence, because a lot of y'all buy, y'all not even happy with your bodies, you're not even happy with yourself, you're bleaching your skin, like all sorts of stuff, digs back to your internal control over purchasing, who you are, your confidence, all goes back to your internal. The way you spend is because of how you feel inside. The amount of money you make is because of how you feel inside. What you spend your money on is based on how you feel inside. Prime example, y'all, when I'm feeling like a girl, I'm like, oh, yes. Uh, and I call my cousin because I just want to shop. I want to shop. I want to buy my little stuff, right? When I'm down or sad, y'all, I just want ice cream, right? Or whatever. So the reality is we have to know how to control those emotions because those emotions create bad financial habits. And not only that, it creates bad habits and problems for you because you're going to think you're ugly. You're going to think you, you need this to look cute. You're going to think you have to keep up with the Joneses. You need all of this. But I think the moment that you guys get financial discipline and really realize that you don't need nothing to make you who you are, get that now and then you will be in control forever. Because you won't have to spend to show off. You will never, you will, you will never need nothing. Food won't, you won't have no addictions. Food won't move you. Nothing won't move you. You'll just be like, oh yeah, I want this for myself, so I'll get it. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Oh, I can afford it. I'll get it. But it would never be like, oh, dang, I saw her on Instagram with it. Like, let's be honest. That's how y'all be. I'd be like, oh, oh, Instagram. She's Black love screenshot. I need this. <laughs> yeah. So then you just spent $1,500 to my black love. I just want you guys to realize that most of the people that's very, very stupid, stupid, rich, even my clients are like really, really rich. They don't have no habits. They might have a little fun, but they don't care about, they buy designers because they want it. If they buy the new um, car, that's because they wanted it and they can afford it. It's not because they were triggered. So that's where I was trying to go. By you guys getting that financial discipline, nothing will trigger you. So you not being able to spend over the next couple of months, it's not going to phase you. You not spending for the next six months or not traveling for the next six months, it's not going to phase you. Your girlfriend's going to be like, boo, you dry. We going to Mexico. We dry. You be like, boo, I'm good. I'll see y'all next year. But you okay because you realize if you go to Mexico, you're going to spend five Gs. You can put that to the side and save it or invest it. I just want us to all really be smart right now. And let's use this opportunity to change Whatever negative financial habits that we possess right now. 
And all of us know what it is. It can be like you, like well, how I was when I was a label whore. Or you could be like somebody else that's like the, like the E. Or you could be like somebody else that like the shop. Or you just, you want to be the it girl on Instagram. So you buy every fit and fad. You try every little tea or every little thing. You know, yeah. And so really, guys, the reality is, is to really get over this inflation stuff, we have to know our numbers. And we have to become financially disciplined. And we have to act like we're in control over our lives. Because we control what we make. The government does not tell me how much I can charge y'all. Nobody tells me that. But that's what I wanted for myself. And you guys have to now ask yourself, what, what comfort do you want? Do you want your hourly rate to be predicated off of someone else? Or do you want your hourly rate to be predicated off what you bring to the table? And the only way to get what you're really, really worth, guys, is to be second, third, fourth, or fifth in the company or start your own. So, but we have to know what we want. And it's not what y'all see online. And that's what's killing me because right now we are so, and I think I'm going to just have a whole, because y'all, I ain't beat y'all up in a while. I think I might have a whole social post where um, a whole social video where I just talk about the impacts of the social media. Y'all being weak. Y'all not doing what y'all supposed to be doing, stuff like that. Y'all confidence not popping because I see it. I see it. And because you guys share it, you be like, oh. I dream of a guy being like this, or I dream of this, like y'all posted. But it's okay. The reality is, is that as long as we know what we want and go in control of it, take do the work, right? No recession, no inflation will damper things because you have your budget, you know what your spending is, you know how much money you need to make. And as long as you're not in jail or shadow ban or ban from Instagram and Facebook, then you have the opportunity to make that money. And so if you're worried about your finances right now, if your job is seeming like it's tight, you have a gift. God gave it to you. You're probably pushing it. And that's another thing before I close out. A lot of y'all are struggling because God gave you a gift that you've been running away from for years. And so do y'all know that he will suffocate you, make your whole life miserable till you just tell it that's all you have? So rather than him taking everything from you or pushing your back against the wall to the point where you're suffering and just start the gifts now. Like we always go through these tough times and this is the time when the people with the best innovations become successful. People that have the perseverance become successful. People that create from because that's all we have, y'all. We have to create from our hands. Then we replicate it to robots and stuff, right? You develop something. So whatever it is you're great at, it's time to put it out there. Because that might be what allows you guys to sustain during this tough time. Because saving $5 and you only... Wait. So, yeah, I was about to, I was about to say it right. Because I don't want you guys to be only saving $5. Because the reality is if you can only save $5, then that means we have an income problem. Or your expenses are too high. So you guys need to go out and make more money or cut back. But a lot of us, it's not the cut back. It's the top. We have to go out and make money, guys. Don't get stuck at no jobs. Don't get stuck, nothing. It's companies like mine. We waiting for bomb people. It's so many small businesses, y'all. We waiting for people to work with us so we can get, what is going on? It is a lot of small businesses out here, y'all, that is looking for their next amazing assistant so they can get to the next level. And that might be your six-figure job. Like, guys, it's so much opportunities. Don't get stuck. Open your eyes. Don't overspend. <laughs> Cut back if you can. And you're going to come out of this recession on top, y'all. So that's all I got. I didn't even think I was going to get through the whole show, y'all. Didn't even realize. And see, that's one of my problems. I, I probably going to have to figure out something. Because while I'm talking, I cannot share my screen all the time. 
and keep up with all of the technical things that y'all may want me to do. And I'm realizing that, like, I just like to talk. I may need somebody else to show my um, images and all of my stuff because this is just not working. So I apologize, guys, if I did go off the handle a little bit. But the reality is the tips that I gave y'all is practical, actionable. And if you guys do that, you're going to be fine. You're going to make extra money. You're going to save some money. You're not going to be gun ho on everything and what everybody got going on. You're going to do what you want when you want to do it. And you're going to be able to afford it. And it comes with a little bit of sacrifice. And it's okay. If your girlfriends can party this week and you can't, that's okay. You don't, you, you need to be comfortable in your own skin, girl. Okay. Same thing for my fellas. Don't you don't have to, you're not, what you partying for anyway? What are you partying for? Most of the time, let me be very honest with you guys, we partying to get rid of something. We're not happy. We're not, something is missing. I'm going to be honest with you. Because when I was out there partying, guess what? I loved it. But I loved the limelight and I loved the the glitz and the glam. and all. So what is it? What is it you like? Right? And figure out how to control it, y'all. Yeah. So I will see you guys next week. We're talking about, hold on, y'all. Let me see what we're talking about next week's topic. Oh, ways to promote growth. Oh, that's perfect. Ways to promote growth in your business. So that's next week's topic, guys. Ways to promote growth in your business. So I will see you guys next week. Make sure you watch the replay if you did not catch all of the actionable steps that I gave you guys tonight. And I love you guys. And I wish you financial freedom, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Good night. Thank you.